group primarily? Is it going to be that and maybe mm. some guests? Or is it, can you say? Is it asking all the awkward questions? One variety, and well, I'd love to use my band, but uh, unfortunately, the, the budget, you know, to fly home and back for yeah, yeah. plus the, the variety of sounds, you know, we're, we're going to go for an eclectic sound which will involve other players. But, uh, will be hopefully playable by the band that I have. Is that great? <laughs> do you see, I mean, do you see, okay, okay, but how about rephrase this then? Um, you do an album, do you foresee yourself working with the same group for? Along the, I mean, for, yeah. The future, uh, oh yeah, you, you build up a, a camaraderie. Yeah. And I think anybody will tell you that a band is better than pick up players. Well, it's one of the best bands I've heard. You, you become uh, you become a soap opera and you become um, a family really, and it's you, you share travel briefs and misery and all the rest of it, internet, <laughs> all the rest of it. So it's great to have that. You know, actually, we've been together for almost 18 months now. Yeah. We shared this board now. Well, I'll tell you, it's one group, so. Okay. Jeff, uh, you're going on July to Europe mm -hmm. in your world tour. I don't know if you have ever thought of going to Mexico or South America, the rest of South America. Um, I think we played once in Mexico City, um, which also covered um, Rio. That was it. There were two fairly small gigs. For some reason, we didn't go back. I suppose it's a logistic thing again. You know, if, you, if, if you've got a tour that's tightly centered around a certain spot in America or whatever, to go off down there for two gigs wipes out a lot of, you know, we're not, we're, we're not big league, we weren't big league uh, money players back then. So, you know, in order to make things work, we had to go with where the money was sensible. You know, I'd like to go back, maybe, with a good album that, that's reasonably successful, one could do that. Thank you. Thank you. What is your philosophy in playing music? My philosophy? Well, it's, it's, <laughs> I don't know why I wanted to do it. But, um, what makes anybody want to, you know, threaten their life by racing on a motorcycle? I don't know. I'm kind of, I'll go single-handedly in a boat. I can't think of anything more miserable myself. But, Something drives us to do this. It was the lack of, I suppose, satisfaction with listening and just absorbing what was played on a record and um, wanting to get on board and find out, you know, and then interpret what I heard. That, that's really what it is. It becomes fun to play, and then when other people start to enjoy what you're doing, then it becomes very enjoyable, I can tell you. <laughs> Rick King Jazz Variations Radio in the U.S. Um, you're one of the earliest guitar players that I've seen utilize tapping technique. Was there an individual, a guitar player, that inspired you to do that, or was that just something you discovered fooling around? Right. You're talking about the, yeah. the ball of the thing. Yeah. Right. I've got a book at home called the, the this Touch System by Ben Webster, and it's goes back to about 1946. Oh. Uh, so nothing's new. Um, he actually used a, a lot more subtleties in his, uh, his application of, of the way he, he actually uh, varied the angle of his fingers to, to bring out the harmonics and play variable chords, uh, multi-chords as well as just single note flurries of, of bravado, you know, that he was actually playing chords like a piano player right. by pressing directly down with the ball of the finger. Right. Fantastic. Never heard him, but it sounded Good in print. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, uh, Jeff, I'd like to get your thoughts maybe um, with the benefit of hindsight on Blow by Blow and Wired, which were landmark albums in the sort of jazz, rock, fusion. How do those albums uh, seem to you after 30 whatever years? How do they seem? Yeah, how do they sound to you and what's your uh, thoughts on their legacy? It's funny how you look back, it's like an old photo album where you think, oh, Oh, sorry about the hair, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or the trousers, or the, or the um, but, but the Jan stuff still stands up, head and shoulders, I think, you know, because of Jan now, and his European, just his ears, you know, so incredible, and his technique. Um, and I, I lost George Martin along the way in the quest to try to find a more aggressive spin on the type of music that I was influenced by, which was 
Margaret and Orchestra, and John, you know, John McLaughlin, all those great players. That, um, what I wanted to do was join up with the iron and try to make a more, slightly more accessible version of that, really. Uh, perhaps say accessible, I mean that I was incapable of doing what John did. <laughs> so I was a watered down version, but I, I did have fun doing that. And it gave, it gave me a year of great fun with Jan and his band. Jeff, are you excited that you're going to be in the upcoming version of Guitar Hero 5? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just see how excited I am when the check comes in. <laughs> no, I, I think it's great. You know. And what, what amazes me is that um, the electric guitar is still so popular. And, uh, it didn't fall down the whole the black hole of nothing. You could have easily done that. Thanks to you. <laughs> uh, question, being a, a music legend, what kind of impact does that have on you personally when you have to come and do a live performance? I don't think about that. I mean, seeing that nonsense up there, I wonder who they were talking about for a minute. <laughs> but um, it's, very, it's very nice at this stage of my life to be, you know, listen to. I, 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 I don't really know how to add to that. It just puts a hell of a lot of pressure um, the alcohol of all places. I mean, we could play a dozen gigs around London and not have the same worry about, you know, how it's going to go, but that place. But I think what you're saying is that the worry of the, of the, pres the prestigious gig still hurts, you know, like, until it's over with. It's still ever-present. Will we do it? Will we won't do it? I could do without it. <laughs> uh, when you're playing, there's always that feeling of uh, spur of the moment thing, spontaneous uh, playing, you know? I was wondering how much of that is, uh, is something that, that you just do, because it, you think of it. It's, um, it's a form of musical Tourette, I think. <laughs> it, it, it's involuntary spasm. Um, I think it probably is a form of insanity. Required. So I think, you know, I'm not going to hold the insanity thing. I think most people are play are quite nuts anyway. You know, you become obsessed about um, sound and positioning, note notation and chords, and we, we just get drawn into it. But um, I try not to be boring, and that's all it is, really. I make terrible mistakes. But when there's a result, there's a, a result. Um, if it's a great mistake, I put it in there and, 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 and expand it. I was actually.